Okay, so, so um, I was in another cab, right? I don't, I don't just go around in, I don't just go around in cabs. It's just that I mainly look after kids or do gigs. So the only time I get to talk to adults and get ideas for routines is if I pay them to drive me around, basically. <laughs> and I was in another cab, and in the front of the cab, the guy had all. Uh, you know, England flags and EDL stuff, and I thought, oh, here we go. I judged him, basically. <laughs> Which you shouldn't do. My granddad always said you should never judge a book by its cover. And it was for that reason that he lost his job as chair of the British Book Cover Awards <laughs> panel. <laughs> I can write jokes, I just choose not to. <laughs> anyway, the bloke started out all this like BNP type stuff and I, I got a bit I got more bored than annoyed by it in the end uh, to be honest and in the end I said to him do you know what I'm gonna get out of here I said stop the car and don't expect a tip my wife is black now she isn't black uh, but if she was I'm sure she'd been very annoyed by what that cab driver had to say or maybe not maybe she would have engaged with him and use her intelligence and her personality and her sense of humour to sort of talk him out of his prejudices. I hope so. I hope that's the kind of woman my imaginary black wife would have been. <laughs> Not like my real wife, my white wife as I call her. <laughs> She's Irish so she'd probably just have been drunk and hit the bloke. Absolutely awful. But my, my black imaginary wife, what she likes, I'll tell you what, she, she's very... She's a very laid-back, cool, chilled-out sort of person. She's, fun, she's very good with the children, she never gets riled up by them. My real white Irish wife, if it's after six o'clock, forget it, she's a drunk, violent, aggressive, incoherent, religious bigot. <laughs> I won't negotiate with her. <laughs> or with any of them, to be honest. But my black imaginary wife, she's had to, when, when we first met, it was difficult because uh, back then people in the UK were more suspicious of mixed race uh, relationships, but then it's much better now. And also it's easy because it, I, it doesn't, it's not real, I've imagined it, so. <laughs> I don't really know what it's like. It's sort of patronising liberal delusion. Um, I was in another cab on the day that the House of Lords were discussing the gay marriage bill. And the cab driver, who as it turned out was a Hindu, he said to me he was against sexual unions of people of the same gender on religious grounds. I thought to myself, oh, I thought, I wonder which Hindu god it is objects to the sexual union of two people of the same gender. I do hope it's the Hindu god that looks like the result of the sexual union of a human and an elephant. <laughs> but I didn't think of that at the time. So I'm, not, I'm not funny in real life. I thought of it... Uh, I thought of it when I got home and I wrote it on my desk and I learned it and then I've come and said it to you tonight and then I'm, I've learned this as well that I'm saying now and written that and this now I've written that and learned that and this just going like that going, eh, eh, eh. I've learned that I've written that and this now I've learned this and this and this now and this and just going eh, ah, I've written that I've learned that everything's written and learned so, so I didn't say that I said to him do you know what I said stop the car I'm gonna get out here and don't expect a tip, my wife is a man. <laughs> now he isn't a man, he's a woman, but if he was a man, I'm sure he would have been very offended by that Hindu cab driver, or maybe not, maybe he would have engaged with him and tried to laugh him out of his prejudices using his sense of humour, because you know what, they've got a hilarious sense of humour, haven't they? The gays, very witty, acerbic, caustic sense of humour. The gays, not like my imaginary black wife, who's very serious, or my real white Irish wife, who, as I've said, is a, a violent hooligan, a harrier, little better than a gutter thug. But my gay imaginary wife is absolutely hilarious. She's one of the. F 
he's the funniest person I've ever met. He's, he should have his own chat show. They should try that. He's so funny, I reckon, after five minutes alone with him, that Hindu cab driver would have opened his own grinder account. He's hilarious. <laughs> He's fantastic. I love him. I love all my wives. They're all great. Now, one night, I ate too much cheese. And uh, I know I can see you, I can see you thinking, we can see that, mate. We can see you've been at the cheese since the last series. Um, and in your mind's eye, you probably pictured me eating a massive block of cheese. It's not, I'm not a pig, I wouldn't do that. I'm a, I'd eat that much cheese, but I'm a connoisseur of cheese. I'd eat that amount, but in little bits from all different types of cheeses. I absolutely love cheese. I love cheese, I love cheeses. I love all the different cheeses. Red Leicester. <laughs> all those cheeses, I love all of them. So, <laughs> one night I ate too much cheese and my black imaginary wife and my gay imaginary wife, well, they met in my subconscious. Now, they both knew about my real white Irish wife, but they didn't know about each other. And the shit hit the fan way. Black imaginary wife is stomping around, my little gay imaginary man wife. He was going, oh, what if your real white Irish wife were to find out about all this? Well, I wonder if your marriage would survive. And it was at that moment I realised I had no option but to murder both of them. <laughs> now, in my mind, that's the punchline of that bit, but it never gets a, a huge laugh. And um, I think the problem is that um, the character of the black imaginary wife and the gay imaginary wife. They're so richly drawn, aren't they? They're so three-dimensional. They avoid all the usual stereotyping. And I think it's as if you know them and you've got a very real relationship with them. Going, no, they'll, don't take them away. 